we're doing something a little crazy. from Estes Park, Colorado. It has been a while since you've seen us, just like last time. I know we've been promising some new content for a while now, and this is it. Sorry for the delay, but we hope uh, this video uh, is something that is useful to you and provides you some, some good information and a good update on where we are with our camper and our travels. We wanted to test out the Imagine, which we got in January, and we wanted to take it a few places before we came back with more content, kind of recapping our experience so far. So we've had a chance to take it a couple places closer to home, do a couple two to three hour trips and kind of see how it handles some different situations. And now, as you know, we're in Estes Park, we've done something pretty big with it. We drove it two days across the middle of the country from Indiana to Colorado, stayed one night in Kansas and got to experience uh, the Imagine on the beautiful Interstate 70 across the US. Sarcasm, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> I-70 has some pretty rough stretches and uh, it, it wore us down pretty good. Uh, but we did make it. We are here and we are enjoying uh, the mountains and, and some hiking and things here. It's not that Indiana is not good enough for us. We've loved camping in Indiana and the surrounding Midwest so much. We had a chance to go to Fern Cliff back around Memorial Day and that's over in Southern Illinois. And we did some hiking there that we hadn't had a chance to do before. And then we had a chance to take it up to more of central Indiana to McCormick's Creek State Park. But we've always dreamed of doing the thing that we don't have back at home, which is mountains. And so we knew that that was going to be a little bit of an adventure. And since our usual adventures overseas are kind of on hold right now, we thought that this was the best use of the Imagine. We took two days to make the, the trip. It probably should be better broken up into three, maybe even four days, but with limited vacation time, having uh, you know office day jobs, we had to make it as quickly as we safely could. And so it was, it was tiring and we needed a day to recover. But since that recovery has happened, we've been busy. If you've watched our previous videos, you know that we traded our R-Pod 180 to the Imagine 22 MLE uh, back in January of this year. And uh, we just kind of want to give a recap of those issues that we've experienced so far and some of the things that we've liked and some of the towing tweaks we've made to try to make this a better experience for us. Yeah, overall, I would say we're very happy with the trailer. Um, and compared to the R-Pod, we've been much happier just with build quality, the extra space, of course, and the added amenities and features of the trailer. Um, it's just been a nice upgrade. Uh, as far as issues go, there haven't really been too many. Um, trying to think of anything major. I, I can't think of anything major. We've got one window that's maybe a little bit leaky, um, but. You know, that could be either a, a defect in the window, a Lippert, I think it's a Lippert window, or maybe a, a slight flaw in the installation. So we need to have that looked at um, with some warranty work. We did get a recall on uh, the propane regulator right before we headed out on this trip. And so I had the bright idea of trying to swap that out myself, which I did. I found a, a regulator uh, that could replace the original one locally and made that swap. And then once we got out here, I did have a mobile RV tech come take a look at my work, leak test it, uh, pressure test it, and just to make sure my work was up to snuff and that we were operating our propane system safely. The roads out here to Colorado really put the Imagine to the test. Mm -hmm. Interstate 70, in my mind, Interstate 70 was gonna be an easy trip for us. We picked Estes Park, Colorado, because it was a straight shot from pretty much Indiana out to Colorado, and you were up in the mountains without having to really go on too many back highways or anything. Mainly interstate the entire way. Interstate 70, I don't know why, is built like ski moguls and so it's up and down in little bumps and it went on for hours. And so I know when we got to Kansas and then when we got to Colorado, most of our stuff in our camper had been thrown pretty hard. But outside of riding on Interstate 70, we've been pretty happy with the towing and we've made some little changes to kind of make that better for us. Yeah, unfortunately, I would say our F-150 may be close to the towing limit. Uh, we, we didn't really expect to be pushing the limits, but we did weigh our unit and both axles on the truck uh, with our weight distribution system on were pretty close to their max weight. I think one was around 90% and the other was about 95%. We've made some adjustments to the, the weight distribution 
hitch to try to even those out and, and distribute the weight um, as best as we know how and keep you know the whole system or the whole rig level. And so we did have our dealer install the weight distribution hitch. Uh, admittedly, they weren't super experienced with maintenance. Um, it was a newer RV dealer that was combined with the Harley dealer, and so most of their techs are used to working on motorcycles and are learning the ropes with RVs. And so after we first towed the unit a few times and noticed quite a bit of movement behind us um, and some bounce, we decided to disassemble the weight distribution hitch and follow the manual and reassemble it ourselves. Uh, since doing that and making sure that all the measurements were exact to the manual or as exact as we could make them, we've, we've been more happy with the towing feel. And I think in comparison to the R-Pod, having the dual axle has really helped. Um, we hit some really rough bumps coming out here and when we took our R-Pod to Michigan last year, we crossed some road construction up in Michigan that caused the R-Pod to really fly up. And we really didn't get that same experience going across the, the country. Overall, we've just been very happy with the Imagine. Um, it's very comfortable. We'll be out here for a week. We've been on inside it for a very rainy, long weekend. Uh, we've liked the space. We've even taken the dogs <laughs> once, twice. twice. We've taken the dogs twice. They're not great campers yet, but we're working on it. Um, and so it's just given us the space that we've needed. So yeah, so there's your update on towing from Indiana to Colorado. We will give you an update at the end of this video back from Indiana um, once we've towed it back home. So like Steph said, she definitely got bounced around. Things were kind of flung everywhere. Um, so she, she was challenged by I-70 and will be challenged yet again. So we'll see if things held up um, going back as well as they held up coming over. Um, but we have high hopes. So that covers everything from here. So we'll see you back in Indiana. Real quick guys, we wanna say a big thank you to Waggle for partnering with us and sponsoring this video. If you're like us and your furry friends come along with you on your RV trips, or if you're really like us and you're trying to train your furry friends to come along with you, then you know that having to leave them behind at the campground can be stressful because you're worried about power outages, air conditioner issues, and all sorts of other things. With Waggle, you don't have to worry about that anymore because you can monitor the temperature, the humidity, and the power status in your RV and get real-time notifications to your phone when something changes. Waggle uses a Verizon wireless SIM card so you're connected in more places so you're getting alerts in real time and you even get alerts if your Verizon wireless signal drops so you know that you should probably return to check on your friends. We've been testing Waggle out for about a month now and we've been really impressed with the speed of the notifications and the reliability of the device itself. If you are interested in trying out Waggle we can get you 40% off of your unit purchase today if you use the link that's down in the description and coupon code LL40. Now back to the video. And we are back in Indiana. We just wanted to wrap up this video quickly with kind of a summary of the trip and how the trip home with the trailer went 16 hours across the country. Do you think that this is something that we would do again? You know, with the Imagine driving halfway across the country to go on a two week camping trip. I don't think it's the distance that's really the problem. I think it's the distance and the amount of time that we tried to cover it that was the problem. Uh, we didn't really have any issues towing. It was just, you know, long, tiring days because our first day and our last day were like 700 mile days or something like that. And when you're towing something that's, you know, as heavy as the truck behind you, uh, no comments on whether or not that's okay, please. Um, it, uh, it's just a long day, yeah. It's a, it, you know, it's a lot of extra stress when you're driving and it makes for, for long days and tiring days. And so we were worn out. If we could have chopped up the, the trip out and the trip back into three or four days, it probably would have been a little better. It's just a matter of where we are in life. You know, we have three weeks of vacation a year or so, and when we, when we take two weeks off, we don't want to spend, you know, four or five, six days on the road or traveling. Just like when we, you know, travel overseas, we don't want to spend three or four days trying to get to a destination to only spend four or five days there, which is why we haven't dipped into places like Australia and Southeast Asia and things like that. So same com concept here, we've got to cover as much ground as we can, as fast as we can cover it. And that results in us being tired. I will say that I am so excited that we got to get the Imagine out to the Mountain West. We really enjoyed camping uh, right outside of Rocky Mountain National Park. I think we spent most of the day in the park and then coming back to our own little space was really great. I think that made us love our camper even more. Um, I wish some of those mountain places were closer, but we've got some great lakes and some options here in the Midwest that'll hold us over until we can do another big adventure like that. 
Yeah, and there's always the most visited national park in the country that's not too far away from us. What, six hours to uh, Smoky Mountain National Park? Lots of traffic there. I think that's probably a place you'd have to book way in the future if you wanted to grab a, a decent spot down there. My family's actually towing their Imagine down there this uh, fall, so we're looking forward to some reviews from them on how their trip went. But. Now, do you think we're gonna make any more tweaks as far as towing? I kind of polled people in our group who are towing this trailer with half-ton trucks. You know, what um, level of torsion bars on their weight distribution hitches they're using. So I may try a little stiffer bars to see if that changes anything. It may make things bouncier and it may not help, but, but we've ordered those to, to try. Other than that, I don't think there are many tweaks left for us to make with this setup. I, I think the next thing would just be a, a, a bigger truck, but I don't think we're ready for that. And, and I don't think we'll be making those long trips like we made this time all that often to warrant, you know, another um, step up in, in tow vehicle. So for now, I think we've done as about as well as we can. We'll try those bars and we'll let you know how that goes. So currently, if you're keeping track at home, we're using um, that Husky centerline weight distribution hitch and we have 600 to 800 pound, uh, that's the, the tongue weight, uh, 600 to 800 pound torsion bars on that hitch system. So we're going to try the 800 to 1200 pound, which is the, the highest uh, level that, that Husky offers. And so we'll see see how that goes. It could be too stiff. It feels like towing is a constant science experiment to find that one sweet spot that really makes travel so much easier and takes a lot of the uh, wear and tear off of the trailer. But the Imagine has done really well. We were extremely happy with how it crossed the country. Yeah, so I, I think we spend a lot of time thinking about towing. You can tell when you're on the road that a lot of other people don't think about it at all based on the setups that you see going down the road, either serious sag in the back end or way undersized vehicles for what looks like is behind them weight wise and so I you know I feel pretty good about the thought we've put into it we probably aren't perfect yet um, and could always use bigger in the tow vehicle department to make things safer but I, I feel pretty good so we're still very much RV newbies but there were a few other items that we learned kind of doing this longer trip and some of that is like tech stuff that would help make our trip a little better because timing as far as how far it is to places and how long it'll actually take you to get to that place when you're towing an RV is very different. Yeah, I think in our head, we've, we've used Google Maps so far, but we always add, you know, 30 or 40% to the estimated time. Um, just with stops and the fact that when you're on the interstate and the speed limit's 70 or 75, uh, we personally are probably running no more than 65, 67. And so that obviously, you're, you're losing time all the time on the estimated time. And so something we may take a look at is there's subscriptions to um, either trucking or RV specific uh, GPS apps as opposed to Google Maps and and they not only do a better time a job of estimating the time it's going to take with a larger rig at a slower speed they also will let you add things like the height and weight of your rig to help you avoid you know narrow roads or roads with low uh, passages like bridges and things like that that you may actually hit on um, you know hit with your rig because it's too tall to, to clear and so we, we may take a look at, at adding something like that um, to make our trips a little easier we did get hung up in Estes Park with um, Google Maps, they took us up a very steep grade that came back down the last five minutes of our 16 hour trip to get to our campground and I think you know an RV specific app would have avoided that uh, that route. We will have one more video coming from this series kind of taking a look at our trip to Colorado as a whole and traveling in 2020 when so many things are still changing and so many people are trying to get outdoors and travel at the same time so stay tuned for that video and we have a couple more trips planned for the fall, so if everything goes as planned, we're hoping to maybe go out to Missouri and then check out more of Indiana later this year. So if you like this video, as always, please give us a thumbs up, and if you want to be the first to know when we post something new, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified as soon as we post. Thanks as always for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.